All right, this is the lecture on design of experiment. The uncertainty around our beta coefficients is also related to how we design our experiments. Because we're using surveys, we can control what information we're going to get about each different attribute we're interested in. For example, let's consider that we are interested in three main effects, an effect A, an effect B, and an effect C. This cube represents the full design space of these effects being positive or negative. At the origin, all three effects are negative. This corner represents the effect where A is positive, but B and C are negative. This corner represents when B is positive, but A and C are negative. And this corner represents when C is positive, but A and B are negative. We also have the two-way interaction terms between AB, BC, and AC. And finally, the corner where all effects are positive. We're typically interested in main effects, or the average change in the dependent variable that's associated with a change in one attribute level. So for example, the main effect for A is going from the side where A is negative to the side where A is positive. If we had observations from every one of the corners on this design space, then we would compute the main effect as the average of the positive A side, so that's the average of these four corners, minus the side where A is negative, so that's the average of these four corners. An interaction effect measures the difference in the main effect of one attribute based on the value of another. So, for example, if we wanted to measure the interaction between A and B effects, then we would compute the effect of going from uh, when A is 0 to A is positive on the side where B is positive, and we would subtract that from going from A is negative to positive where B is negative. So to compute that, we would take the positive A effect minus the negative A effect when B is positive, and we would subtract off the positive A effect from the negative A effect where B is negative. If we have observations on every corner in the design space, we call this a full factorial design. In this case, each of these rows would represent a question in our survey, and if we had an observation about each one, we'd be able to measure any effect in this whole design space. Now, full factorial designs have several properties. One of them is that they're balanced. This means that for each attribute, all levels appear an equal number of times. So let's just look at the A attribute. If we count the times where A is positive and negative, we'll see that it's equal. There's four negatives and four positives. The same is true for B. We have four negatives and four positives, and C, four negatives and four positives. So this is a balanced design. It's also orthogonal. Orthogonal means for each pair of attributes, all pairs of levels appear together an equal number of times. Uh, so let's look at the combination of just A and B. In this case, A and B are the same four times. Here they're both negative, here they're both negative, and then they're both positive here and here. They're also opposites four times. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So there's an equal times that they're the same and opposite. The same is true if we look at B and C. They're the same four times and they're opposite four times. And the same is also true for A and C. So when we look at the combination of different attributes, when we find that their pairs are equal numbers, then that's an orthogonal design. Now in this case, because we only have three effects and each of them only take the values of positive or negative, we only have nine possible effects we would want to measure. But as the number of different effects we want to measure grow, a full factorial design may not be feasible. We simply may not be able to ask about every possible combination in the design space. And in that case, we often rely on fractional factorial designs, which are just a subset of the full factorial. So let's look at this particular subset. This fractional factorial design is balanced because for each attribute, there's an even number of times where the, the effects are positive and negative. Two negatives and two positives for A, the same for B, and the same for C. However, it's not orthogonal. If we look at the effect of A and B, we see that there's four times where they're the same and zero times where they're opposite. So this is not an orthogonal design. In this case, we would say the main effects of A and B are confounded, which means we can't separate these two things apart. We can't be sure if a consumer likes attribute A 
or if they like attribute B, since they co-vary together. If we calculate the main effects for A and B, we'll see that they're exactly the same. The side where A is positive is these two terms, and we would subtract away the side where A is negative, which is these two terms. Well, it's the same for B. These two terms are the only ones available for when B is positive, and likewise, these are the only two where B is negative. Every fractional factorial design has confounded effects, and we can find the other confounded effects by doing a simple trick. If we know that A and B are confounded, well, we can just multiply the other effects by this A equals B. So if we multiply the C effect with A and B, we get that C times A equals C times B. And so the effects for B, C, and A, C are confounded. When you multiply B times A equals B, you get A, B. And when you have two terms that are the same, uh, B times B in this case, those cancel and you get I. When you multiply AC times A equals B, the A's cancel and you get C equals ABC. So the ABC term is confounded with the C term. Here's a different fractional factorial design where we have A, B, and C and the term ABC. In this case, they're both balanced and orthogonal. If we look at the combination of different attributes, we see that they are opposite the same number of times that they're equal. So look at A and B, we see that A and B are the same for these bottom two rows and they're opposites for these top two rows. The same is true for B and C and the combination A and C. So that's an orthogonal design. Now in an orthogonal design, none of the main effects are confounded, which is often a good thing and usually what we're mostly interested in. But keep in mind that because it's a fractional factorial design, there are other confounded effects. In orthogonal designs, the main effect is confounded with a two-way interaction. The A term is confounded with BC, the B term is confounded with AC, and the C term is confounded with AB. Finally, the ABC term is confounded with the I term. So in general, if you're only interested in main effects, an orthogonal design could be an efficient choice for your design. But if you're interested in interaction effects, it may leave you unable to explain certain interactions. When you're designing your experiment, consider the following different questions. First, can you use the full factorial design? If you don't have too many attributes and each of those attributes don't have too many levels, then you may be able to use the full factorial design. In making this decision, you also have to consider what your sample size is likely to be and how many questions each person is going to answer. If you decide that the full factorial is going to be too large, then you have to ask yourself, can you ignore the interaction terms? If you're only interested in main effects and you don't expect to have any important interaction terms, then consider using an orthogonal or a main effects design. This will give you more information about each main effect while confounding the interaction terms. But if you think there might be important interactions, then you might just want to consider using a randomized design. In a randomized design, you just randomly select different rows from the full factorial design. So for practice question two, consider the following experiment design. We have these four rows with the effects A, B, AC, and BC. A, is this design balanced? And is it orthogonal? And part B, write out the equation to compute the main effects for A, B, and C. Finally, are any of the main effects confounded? If so, what are they confounded with? 